Oh my, the bench is cleaned off. So what does that mean? But large piece of gear to take a look at. Um, this has become a minor obsession of mine now. I have found myself another oscilloscope. <laughs> Cheapest borscht actually on, uh, on Craigslist. And so let's see what this little baby brings. <clears throat> A very crusty and dirty um, Philips uh, 3212, 25 megahertz, uh, 14 nanosecond rise time is what it says. Um, but uh, we don't even know if this thing uh, works. So yeah, just got it for, for spec. So plug it in, maybe get a probe out. And contact. We get a dot. Glowy lights are always good. This looks a little cockeyed. Okay, so um, what do we have here? We have amplitude per division. That's 1.2. Oh, hey. Okay. Don't know if you can see that. We get a trace. Now, do we get, okay, 1.2 volts. So we want um, volts per division. So five, 10. So if we have a 0.1, that would give us something. Okay, that would give us something. All right. Now, hook ourselves up to the ground there, and what do we got? Channel A, channel A, triggering on channel A. Huh. Oh, look at that. We get a square wave at... What is that? X position. Huh. It seems to be working. Um, I don't know if it's calibrated at all, though, because that's 0.1 per division, and that's supposed to be a 1.2 volts. So, one. What are we looking at there? That's, two, that's five. That's six volts per division. Oh, I've got the probe on 10 times. There. Um, so now what does that mean? Uh, what am I looking at? There we go. One volt. Oh, 1.2. <laughs> It's even calibrated. <laughs> Holy smokes. There's B channels like that too. Um, channel B, channel B. 1.2, where are you? Man, oh man. Um, I'm, I'm shocked. Well, uh, yeah, for five bucks I can clean the case and um, we can uh, we can say that we've got another oscilloscope in the house. That's uh, pretty crazy. Um, I will open this puppy up to see what's inside it too, just uh, just for grins. And um, I'm sure that some of the contacts in there need to be um, cleaned. But um, it looks like we've got ourselves a skookum deal. I don't smell it making any funny smells. So yeah, let's clean this baby up and see uh, see what's inside it. Okay, so I cleaned a whole pile of crap off of this thing and uh, looks much better. We just like grime all in through here. But anyways, now, Let's see if we can uh, get inside this thing and uh, see how it looks on the inside. Because, wow, <clears throat> this, 
this poor case has seen better days. Um, it's got some corrosion all through there and on there. And I would imagine this was probably sitting in an automotive shop is my guess given the condition or somebody just lugged it around there uh, lugged it around with them into all kinds of hellish um, off-site locations that are totally unspeakable but anyways let's see if we can pop the case off and uh, take a look inside see if it's uh, suffered as much on the inside as it seems to have on the outside or whether or not the case actually did the job that it was intended to do and protect the guts so So I wonder if that's just to keep the feet on. Uh, did a little Googling on this thing and it double insulated. So that means that the, uh, the case is not grounded. It's isolated from ground. But what that also means is that when you plug this sucker and when you put probes on it, and you ground the probe to something that you're testing, it means that ground will take on the... Oh, that was simple. No, oh, this one's broken. It means that the probe, the ground is going to be at the level of the, uh, the what you've got your probe attached to. I don't know, I don't have to do anything about that. Probably not. Okay. So, what do we have here? That's the uh, transformer, is that? Yes, that's just a... Oh, okay. So, off comes the back. Now, how does the case come off? It just slides. What's hampering our progress here? Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, why are you being like that? Wow, this case is totally warped. Yarn warped. Yeah, that thing's been dropped many times. The things have been dropped on it many times. But, uh, yeah, let me just pull the key right here. And we can get a better look on what's going on inside here. It actually looks pretty clean. A lot of discrete components are switching array up there. Uh, looks like it might be a double-sided board. That's where the power supply comes in. Um, going off to the cathode ray tube. Now, what do they have here? They have transistors in sockets. I wonder why. And what happens on the underside of here? Okay, so that is our inputs that's ground that's chassis ground right there and as you can see that goes to the chassis so we just have to be a little bit careful if we're connecting this up to high voltages where this is actually at a potential above earth like regular earth oh well we got a loose screw there not surprising given the amount of vibration this thing's obviously seen but the, uh, the switches look mighty clean. Way cleaner than on the heat kit. So, hmm. Might have a winner here. Let's take a look at the bottom of this. Yeah, double-sided board. At least double-sided board. And what do we have? Um, a delay line? Um, you know, those trimmer pots look a little corroded. I uh, one, you know, what are we, what are we adjusting over there anyway? That's our power supply. 
Uh, they look a little corroded, but they're not too bad. Yeah, that was just um, the light. So, all in all, it's actually in pretty clean condition. I'll have to reattach the, the bezel. One, two, three trimmers there. Um, these switches don't even feel too bad. Not too bad at all. And it's all very clean in there. So, hmm. Oh, I'm gonna glue that bezel back on and uh, I think this is a, I'm gonna have to call, put this into use and see if it is a, uh, a fully functioning scope. But it does look like that that's what it is. A fully functioning 25 megahertz bandwidth, 40 microsecond, uh, 40 millisecond, microsecond, milliseconds, gotta be, uh, rise time uh, analog oscilloscope. And uh, yeah, <laughs> good score. Okay, let's compare the two scopes a bit. So here we have our, um, the Philips uh, 3212 that is displaying, well, let's see, what have we got that set on? We've got it on, what is that, 0.2 volts per centimeter. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, just under 1.2. And on the Heath kit, let me uh, move the intensity up a bit so we can see it. This is actually in better calibration, it looks like to me, um, because we've got the same thing. Um, we've got 0.2 volts per division, so that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So, yeah, this one's reading a little a little high, this one's reading a little low. I haven't um, taken a look at the frequency um, measurement yet, but <clears throat> I actually don't know what the frequency of the Philips um, calibration uh, point is. But anyways, it looks like, uh, yeah, that's two oscilloscopes. And then there's the digital storage oscilloscope that I built from, uh, from a PIC microcontroller, and I'll probably build another one. Um, using a pick and a um, ADC and a uh, Raspberry Pi to um, make it a standalone unit, um, put a little monitor on it. But um, yeah, this has totally become an obsession. An obsession. I don't understand why I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah, it's like collecting telescopes. But these are oscilloscopes. Thanks for watching.